Hey, what's up guys? It's Josh here with another video about music. Today I'm going to go over the pyramid chord. Um, it's a cool technique that I've actually come to discover lately after watching some uh, classic movies. I was watching the movie Rebel Without a Cause, which is starred by James Dean, music by Leonard Rosamond. So this is from the very last chord in Rebel Without a Cause, on the ending where it starts to pan out. Um, this technique is actually reminiscent of that uh, era um, and it was very popular in other movies such as On the Waterfront by Leonard Bernstein and has been used countless of times in um, more of a comedic element or even dramatic elements for cartoons. Uh, growing up watching, you know, um, Pinky and the Brain or Animaniacs, Tiny Toons. Stuff like that, but we're gonna put a name to it. Um, let's call it a pyramid chord. I think it, it's it's a nice way to describe it, where you have one note that is played, and then as it as time goes on, it keeps stacking in succession, and uh, very uh, dense. It's very um, dissonant, and so I would like to show you another example. This is actually from. On the Waterfront, which is also filmed in the 50s, in that golden age of Hollywood films. All right, so a, a very similar sound um, if to, to the untrained ear or someone that um, isn't used to the, this type of, type of uh, harmony, um, it's really it sounds like random notes put together, right? Uh, and, and, and it could be very much so that, but uh, knowing you know where Leonard Bernstein's coming from, I think there was a very intentional use of these notes. Um, it could be uh, very serial, it could be um, more atonal if you will. But we're going to actually dive into some of these notes now. Um, so going back, let's go ahead and start with the first example I just showed you in the Rebel Without a Cause. Okay, so let me play that for you now on the piano. I have B flat, G, C, A, D, B flat, and then an F sharp. So let's go ahead and talk about the intervals. Intervals is really important here because um, as you can see, there's a wide spread of the notes between each other. I have B flat, G. Now if you look at that, that's a major sixth. G to C is a perfect fourth. C to A is a major sixth. Another perfect fourth. Okay, now this gets interesting. From D, I'm gonna go an octave higher on my MIDI keyboard. So from this D, and then B flat, now that there's a little bit of dissonance, right? And then the last note being F sharp. Okay, if you look at those three notes, at least on the very top, it's what you would call an augmented fifth chord. Okay, so we can look at it as a sort of a B flat augmented chord that's embellished with other notes uh, below that are stacked. I, I was analyzing it as it's actually kind of like a B flat augmented fifth, major seventh, add nine, add 13. All right, doesn't make real sense, but that's one way to look at it. Um, another way to look at it is a stack of major six, perfect fourth notes, and then an augmented chord at the end. This is where it sound, it seems random, right? But maybe the, the composer really liked the combination of the notes and uh, orchestrate it this way. All right, now um, moving on, let's go to On the Waterfront. We got F, D sharp, B, F sharp, C, A. That's for the first round. Now, um, again, a lot of dissonance, there's tritones, there's um, augmented intervals. So I have F, D sharp, 
and then D sharp to B. So F D sharp is an augmented sixth chord. You can also look at it as a um, enharmonically a F and E flat minor seventh interval. Uh, I like to think of it as augmented sixth. Okay, then we have a D sharp to B, which is also um, um, a dissonant interval, which is a, a looks like an augmented fifth this time. And then we have a perfect fifth, tritone, and then a major sixth interval at the end. Okay. All right, and then on the second half, we have E, B flat, A flat, F sharp, C. I played the last note wrong. Let me try again. B at the end. Okay. Now, if you analyze that interval real quick, we have E to B flat, which is a tritone. B flat to A flat, or you can think of it as um, B flat to G sharp. Um, augmented six or minor seventh. A flat to F sharp, which is another uh, augmented six or ma minor seventh tritone, and C to B a major seventh. Okay, now analyzing the chords um, and the harmonic structure is is very difficult. I mean, you can think of it as a, um, uh, a F sharp diminished chord over a French augmented sixth chord starting with F, um, and, and that doesn't make sense very much, but um, it, it would be a polychord in that sense. So I don't think of it in terms of harmony for stuff like this, um, and that's actually more power to you guys because then you don't really have to be an expert composer. You can have very um, basic knowledge of you know your harmonies, and you can start making these cool sounds in a pyramid format and pyramid um, approach and then so that brings me to my last point the last example for today I'm going to be playing for you a very special symphony that I was a part of it's called Meslenka's Symphony number no. eight it's a band symphony actually so all uh, band instruments and wind instruments in the last two examples there the notes were being played from bottom to top but it doesn't always have to be like that so let me showcase this for you guys Okay, so it doesn't always have to be this, you know, textbook going uh, from a low note and going all the way up. Um, pyramids can be um, really anything you want it to be. So there you have it. This is actually a really cool topic that I want to talk about because I really don't hear about it much. And uh, from the, you know, little bit of research I've done myself, I don't think there's a real technique or name to this so let's let's call it a pyramid let's um, make it official and um, we'll define it as uh, a stack of notes that are played in succession one at a time layering it um, not necessarily from uh, bottom to top but it can be and 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 uh, using that as a way to enhance your music okay use sparingly this is a very cool way to show off your chops, um, um, to really make a, a, a cool effect in a very dramatic moment in a film or even in a game if you're a game composer. Um, so anyways, keep composing. This is Josh signing off. I'll see you next time.